In today's video, we're going to take a look at Airweight's vacuum bed, its strengths, weaknesses, and if a vacuum bed is right for your hobbyist CNC. So we're going to start off by just kind of blazing through the setup and just kind of show you what goes into getting this thing up and running. If you buy the kit, that is $750, you get the motor and the vacuum bed, the hose, and then some gaskets to seal off the area you want to carve. But I'll go over in a little more detail how it works later. So there's several things you got to put together. You got to add the little nipple on the front so you can add the vacuum hose. And then here's the vacuum itself. And then the vacuum requires a little bit of assembly, but it's relatively easy. This is just a little 110 vac. It doesn't draw a whole lot of power. Also a pressure gauge so you know how much force is actually holding or losing. And now we're just going to go ahead and set this thing up roughly just to make sure everything works and it sucks. In about 15, 20 minutes, I had it loosely working and set up. So now that we know everything works, I'm gonna go ahead and surface the wasteboard, add a new grid so we have a nice, fresh, clean starting point. And then I'm gonna give this thing an actual home, but I just wanna make sure everything's flat and even before I do that. So we're gonna use a one inch surfacing bit. It's just some bit off Amazon. I'll link all the stuff in the description. It's gonna take about 20, 25 minutes to surface it. I'm gonna do about 0 0.02 and see how that looks. And then it's going to take about 25 minutes to add the grid. And for the grid, I'm going to go 0 0.02, 0 0.03 deep. And that's going to take about 25 minutes as well. So about an hour to surface it and add the grid. So it's been a while since I actually surfaced this. And you want to ensure you have a nice flat surface so you're not cutting into the vacuum bed itself. And then I like to add a simple grid to mine. It just makes lining things up a little bit easier. And then we're just going to set this thing roughly where we want it. And then just mark the holes so I can kind of get an idea of where to set the locator pins. And then the Onefinity Elite has this cool dry run feature, so I just engage that so it goes over there and shows where it's gonna cut without actually cutting, and that's close enough for me, so we're just gonna send it. They're just little metal locator pins. They're about a quarter inch, and I cut down about three eighths. All right, it's surfaced. We got the pins exactly where I want them. Now let's make sure everything fits. Should just drop on there like so. Okay. So it's pretty quiet. I don't know how much that's picking up over, you know, all this, but yeah, that's more than enough. So I just added these magnets on here. So I think I might take these off and shift them this way, just so I can build a little four inch drop down, essentially just big enough so I can take this off easily and slide it under here. So we're going to Take this all off of here, put my wasteboard and everything back together, and I'll make this cubby. And then we'll just uh, cut a bunch of stuff and see how it does. So we're going to run the pump through one of these uh, switches. I'll link these in the description. They're pretty good. I run my dust collector through one. So I'll do the same thing with this guy. So we'll just double side tape this up here. Um, I'll probably end up 3D printing something so I can have both of these on here and labeled. So that'll be my pump. Let's just double side tape that on there now. I might be able to laser these actually. I was indeed able to laser these. Some plastics are weird, but this kind of plastic actually lasers really well. All right, so the side quest turned out pretty good. We got vacuum bed dust collection. I'll probably 3D print some sort of mount so it's a little more clean, but boom. And then since I'm not using this yet, let's just slide that there. So now that everything is in place, let's just go over the assembly, drop in the locator pins. There's only two of them. Drop on the air weights, but first smash it into the CNC. I've been just adding a staggered screw per side. These are just Craig screws, and then you shove in the little air hose, and easy as that. Then let's briefly go over how this works. So you have all these holes in here, and you're going to plug the ones with these little rubber corks. And that'll stop the airflow from sucking through those areas so you don't lose pressure. And then you have this little, like, foam stripping it's about a quarter inch it's soft and it helps seal off the bottom of the piece so you don't lose that suction you could probably get this stuff pretty cheap anywhere he sent me this whole roll with the kit so i won't be too afraid to cut it into different lengths and then i have the whole board blocked off except this little square you see inside the gaskets 
and just like that. Then you go over to check the pressure gauge to make sure you have full suction. Under 25 seems to be about full pressure. And then if you pull out one of the little corks, you obviously lose pressure and you can see the meter jumps and it just comes off. And this was my first cut with it and I immediately didn't know what was going on. Okay, so why did this fail? So remember we were talking about pressure? Well, if you cut through the piece, you end up losing pressure and vacuum, therefore the piece ends up sliding free. So we have to be cautious of that in the future. And obviously we have to make some catch-all trays. So we're gonna use Bits and Bits new spiral bowl bits here. I'm pretty excited to try these out. If you wanna support a small business, check those guys out. I will have a link in the description for a discount code. And this was my second carve on the vacuum bed. Now knowing that I can't cut all the way through or I need to at least be conscious of it. So I designed this quick catch-all tray with a little V-bit design in the bottom. And I was probably a little overly cautious on this one. I think this piece was about 0.87 thick and I cut down to about 0.81. But it was still relatively easy to poke through with this sharp countersink bit. And now on to some easy stuff. If you're not cutting all the way through, you really don't have to worry about a lot of this. So we're just gonna surface this cutting board. I did give this two passes through the drum sander just to remove any glue on the bottom, but I released the pressure, flipped the board, and I was back to cutting pretty quick. I have my waste board set to make these cutting boards, so it might be just as fast for me to just use my fence and jig I already have, but it's an option. Turn off the dust collector, release the pressure, and pull off the board. So let's move on to something even smaller and give that a try. This is six by six, and we're gonna cut a five inch tray. And this is just a simple square tray, so I've paid extra attention to place the gasket inside of the outside profile, so I won't have to worry about losing pressure if I did poke through. And as you can see, I did kiss that wasteboard, but it didn't actually cut into the wasteboard. And you need to be cautious about this, because if you make a bunch of deep cuts into your vacuum bed, you're going to lose pressure and it's not going to hold as well. So I went about these two in two different ways. This one I didn't cut all the way through just because it was kind of an odd shape. So I left, I don't know, several thousandths of an inch left. So I could easily run this through the drum sander to clean that up. You could use a little tiny uh, flush trim bit to run through there. I do see them little like micro eighth inch ones that seem to work pretty good for this kind of stuff. Or you could just zip this through with the bandsaw and then that would work just fine. This one was just an easy shape. So I put the suction on the inside here and then just kissed the wasteboard so I could cut all the way through. Now we're gonna try something a little more complex and see how close we can get without breaking seal. And I am setting the Z off of the wasteboard. And I was over here babysitting this thing as I just don't trust it yet because it's new. And I was a little too aggressive on this first hole and I noticed the pressure drop. So I added a piece of tape to it to restore pressure. This is where it should be. And this is where it was after I plugged the hole. We were still holding on, so I just let it rip. And then on the final pass, it ended up breaking free. I was quickly able to catch it and no bits were harmed in the making of this video. But as you can see, once you start losing that suction, it doesn't take much to break it free. Ended up cutting three of these mallets until I was able to get it down to a point where I was happy with the thin layer. I want there to be enough to where I can just run it through the drum sander once or twice and it's good to go, but also there's a lot of variables in the wood. How accurate is the machine going to cut down to thousands of an inch every time? So it's just a little trial and error. I was able to get this one pretty close and easily able to poke through with a knife and I think that's good enough. So what I'm trying to do is cut down as far as I can without breaking through that layer to lose suction. And how I'm going about testing that is, I'm cutting through all the pieces about 95% of the way, and then I'm doing one final pass, leaving like three thousandths of an inch or so left. Because then all I gotta do is run it through the drum sander once or twice, and it should be pretty clean. And I know a lot of you probably don't have a drum sander, but that's why I'm showing this kind of stuff, just so you can see and know what to expect. And maybe there's a better way to do this that I haven't figured out yet, but with my little knowledge, this seems to be the easiest way to go about it. I don't gotta worry about ruining the bed. Two passes through the drum sander and I'm easily able to take my nail and just kind of scrape out that area. And I could just zip through these tabs and it'd be good to go. So I'm by no means an expert in vacuum beds. I've literally had this thing for several days and this review is essentially based off my experience getting it, setting it up, and working with it over the last couple of days. Obviously, I have a lot to learn and still figuring it all out, but a few things I haven't tried yet are, this, for instance, is what he calls a fixture table, I believe, but it would mount on here with those locator pins, so it would be in the same exact spot every single time. And then you would essentially cut a grid in here that looks similar to this bed, 
and you would you'd be able to slap that piece in there over and over again. So you would carve your piece, take it off, put the new one in there in the exact same spot. You wouldn't have to change your X, Y, and Z zeros at all, and you could just repeatedly slap that thing in there. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna implement this thing yet because I don't do a ton of stuff that's the same exact size and repeatable anymore, but it's a cool feature that I'm gonna play with for sure. And then the second thing he has on his website that most big cabinet shops would use as well would be you put a piece of MDF on here, it sucks through the MDF and holds your piece down, and this is your sacrificial layer. I've tried this and didn't have very good luck with it, but he sells this like holy membrane that helps direct the airflow to hold it down a little bit better. I'm gonna have to order some of that and give that a try. It's just a sticker that goes on here. You can cut into it, it's not that big a deal. You know, you can slide it if you really tried, but uh, for the most part, you gotta be on a corner and you really gotta be pushing. I'm just curious if this is gonna hold better or worse with this on here in between the vacuum bed itself. So maybe it's more forgiving, maybe it's not, I don't know. And another thing I would also like to try this with a bigger motor. Because a lot of them big professional machines have five 10 horsepower motors, which is insane and big and uses a lot of power. And this one here is kind of small. So I, I would be interested to try this, same exact setup with the motor, say twice the size. Because this thing only draws a couple amps, so it's really not that big a motor. I could handle a little bit more here. But again, I, I, I haven't researched any of that and I really don't know yet. So based on my experience using this over the last several days, who is this for? So if I was just buying my first CNC that's you know several thousand dollars, I don't think I would spend $750 on buying this. I would just learn the machine, get comfortable with it, and then invest in that in the future. Just because $750 is a lot of money, especially when you're probably spending most of your money on a machine, a laptop, maybe a spindle, bits. It just adds up pretty quick. So I think this is more dedicated i mean if you can afford it obviously go for it i think this is more geared towards like the small business owner someone that's you know slapping that same repeatable catch-all tray down or whatever you're making doing that same thing um you just need to be conscious of cutting through and all that and you don't want to cut into this because it's like 350 400 so you want to be as careful as you can because the more you chew it up the less suction it's going to have so overall i think it's pretty neat i do need to spend more time with it just to get more comfortable with it. I also could be doing some of this wrong. I, I watched a few YouTube videos and talked to a few friends, so like, I'm by no means an expert. So take this review you know, with a grain of salt if this kind of stuff speaks to you. I do have a 10% off code in the description. He did send this to me, he did not pay me. I don't have a contract or anything, but I do get a small kickback if you use that affiliate code. This is $750 with a 10% off code if you buy the whole bundle. You don't need to use this pump, he said. You can buy pretty much any vacuum pump. So if you want to save some money there, you could get a different pump, or if you already have one, great. This thing's about $400 if you just buy the bed. Again, I think this is more so targeted to the person with the higher budget, or if you're doing batched out stuffs that are relatively the same size. We also recently started a Patreon, so if you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. I've been listing these files, I've been using these videos free to patrons over there, so if you're interested in that, go check that out. You can also always buy our files on our website. But either way, if you just want to support us by liking the videos and commenting down below, we appreciate that as well.